shapes and things and we're going to do load a constant i4 is like in 32 in opcode form so we're going to load a constant of 123 and we'll put that into stack position zero we'll then load 10 and put that in stack position one we'll then load zero and one subtract them and then call console.writeline okay that's reasonably straightforward so now we're actually going to explain a bit about what's going on let's explain everything we've got here we've got some using directives they're to do with namespaces they're making things available for us in an easy way we've got a namespace for ourselves that we're declaring now when i talk about declaring that's sort of bringing something into being it's creating something in particular um almost all declarations end up having curly braces in c sharp which give the sort of scope of what they're declaring so we're declaring a namespace called fundamentals and everything inside these curly braces is going to be in that namespace. We can, if we want, have more namespaces within the same file. That's pretty rare, but it, it is feasible. The important thing is anything within that, within those braces ends up in the fundamentals namespace. And if we create more classes in different files, they will also contribute to the fundamentals namespace. So, a namespace is a way of finding things, referring to things uh, where multiple things can have the same name. So, you may know several people called Rob, and you can think of someone's surname as a sort of namespace. It's, if you think of, I'm thinking about Connery at the moment. Okay, now I know if I'm talking about Rob, that means Rob Connery. It doesn't mean Rob, my plumber, or someone, someone like that. If we declare our own ifoo of out t, and we can make a method give me a t, um, an instance of t, there we go, so that we don't get two capital letters together, right? So that's fine, that compiles. If we tried to write a method, take an instance of t, t instance, bang, invalid variance. The type parameter t must be contravariantly valid on ifo of t. t is covariant. Okay, it works fine if, we're, if we don't have anything. Um, but at that point, an ifoo of apple couldn't be treated as an ifoo of fruit. So that's covariance, all to, all to do with values coming out of an interface. There's also contravariance, which is when values only go in. And this happens much less often than covariance. And even covariance usually happens with i numerable. Yeah, they are unrelated properties. So there's no common interface or anything that you could refer to statically, which would normally allow you to do x dot length there and x dot length there. You know, they're completely different properties. But with dynamic typing, we can say, well, do you know what? I don't care at compile time what you think x refers to. Don't think of it as referring to any particular type. Just let me do what I want with it. Sort it all out at runtime. And that's exactly what happens. So here, this call to console.writeline x.length. The compiler doesn't know whether there's going to be a length property. It doesn't even know what type that length property is going to be. So it doesn't even know there are lots of different overloads of console.writeline. We could be trying to print a string. We could be trying to print um, an integer, which actually we are. We could be trying to print an object. Who knows? The compiler doesn't know. So it says, do you know what? At execution time, I will work out what x.length means. Then I will work out, based on the actual type of that property, I'll work out which overload of console.writeline you're trying to call. And I'll...